This is a black witch moth, one of the largest and most impressive species of moths on the American continent. It really prefers tropical environments such as the rainforest, all these, although these strong flyers can migrate all the way up to colder climates, up to Canada or New York in rare cases. Despite being widespread and common in the tropics, very little is known about the life cycle of this insect. This is my insect breeding laboratory in southeast Brazil where I work as an entomologist and I decided to figure out the life cycle in captivity. I started with capturing wild females and feeding them sugar water in captivity. Make sure to feed them sugar water often and properly if you want them to lay a lot of eggs. And over time they did lay eggs. I collected all the eggs and placed them in little petri dishes. They will hatch really fast. In four to five days, one can already expect to see babies. These are the first instars. They are currently about to feed on Inga, but they can eat many plants in captivity. Excellent! If I pull this off, we will be one of the first people to document breeding them on the internet. Just a few days later, some were already in the second instar, or second life stage. I raised these in a small plastic box at first. However, I made the decision to move them from a plastic box into a large rearing cage. In the cage they started growing excellently. It did not take them very long to grow into the third life stage. The third life stage is thinner, longer and slightly hairy. They can run very fast too. The caterpillars of the black witch seem to, in many cases, exclusively feed on the young leaves or leaf buds. They don't even touch the older, more mature leaves. How curious! And they grew bigger and grew bigger. This is the fourth instar. The larvae like to hide themselves by compressing their bodies tightly and pushing them against twigs or stems. Considering they are long and slender, it allows them to blend in with the vegetation with relative ease. It's no wonder these animals are rarely filmed or photographed. Maybe some water. Yeah, spray them. They like to be humid. If you turn off the lights now. And we check them tomorrow. And then finally they grew to the final life stage. In star number 5. Yep, 5 out of 5. It took them slightly over a month to become fully grown. While not super colorful, I do think they are pretty in their own unique way. Don't you guys agree? The experiment was going well and multiple individuals reached maturity. During the day, caterpillars hide in the soil, in leaf litter, or in this case the flower pots that were used to grow their food plant in the laboratory. Then finally some larvae started pupating. Here are some of the pupa of the black witch moth. The pupa of this species emerged in about 5 weeks time. I placed them in a container with humid vermiculite. Incubating the pupa is easy, it's a matter of keeping them warm and humid. And before you know, the first moths are coming out. This right here is a male. This experiment revealed their life cycle and all their early life stages. And this is the film first male that came out. It's one of the only black witch moths that were reared in captivity. The breeding experiment was a success. This video was filmed in the laboratory of a natural reserve in southeast Brazil. It is called Regua or Reserva Ecologica de Guapiatsu. Over time, more and more moths started coming out. In total, during the experiment, we managed to raise about a dozen individuals. Notice how some of them have a bluish purplish iridescence when they are observed from certain angles. It kind of reminds me of an oil slick. It is honestly very beautiful. In captivity, you can mix sugar and water in a 50-50 solution. The solution can then be fed to the moths from bottle caps or other small containers. The moths will proceed to drink the sugar water until they are full. But a superior way of feeding them is offering them rotting bananas. Naturally, they are frugivorous, but they can be offered rotting fruits such as mangoes, papayas, jackfruit, but their favorite appears to be ripe and fermenting bananas for sure. They love them. The moths were kept and released in a large black enclosure made from netting that was built specifically to research this species. It is about 3 by 4 meters wide and 2 meters tall, in a tropical rainforest environment. Males and females lived here for several weeks and mated. For the full results of this experiment, please check out my website breedingbutterflies.com. We now have a detailed article that shows their life cycle and the information about this experiment. After that, females were collected in captivity again and they would lay more eggs in pop-up cages. 
These eggs were collected and five days later the next generation of baby caterpillars came out. Successful experiment. This is one of the few only documented instances of breeding the black witch moth in captivity. The eggs of the females hatched, so I would say mission accomplished. Thank you guys for watching, I greatly appreciate your viewership. Not many people care about insects, so you as a viewer are unique. Check out my main YouTube channel. It's called Bart Coppens, because this is just my secret, smaller, second channel in which I post summaries, outtakes or behind the scenes videos. If you like this content, search for Bart Coppens on YouTube. And this was Bart with the life cycle of the Black Witch. Have you ever seen one of them in the wild? If so, leave a comment. It's easy to bait them with rotting fruit, so if you just so happen to live in a natural range, consider leaving some bait so you can observe them for yourself. Bye bye!